uh, to another episode of Rain Day Gaming. My name is Rain Day, and I am excited to talk to you about the five things that are the best things to come to Apex Legends in Season 7. We haven't even gotten to Season 7, but if you're watching this now, if you're watching this and you have an opportunity to uh, be playing Season 7, it's still going to be valuable. If you have an opportunity to get hyped for Season 7, it's still going to be valuable. Because these are things that, as a, as a gamer and someone who's been in the dev side of things and who's been all aspects of gaming, has really tried to make this so that no matter when you watch it, you're going to learn something about what makes games important, what makes games hype, and what truly moves the bar as to what's valuable. And one thing that, uh, unfortunately may not be there and might be missing from season seven and you'll be able to now verify if i was right but i'll save that to the end of the video uh thank you so much for watching biggest thing you guys can do everybody's on stream all the concurrence everybody's watching the video uh make sure you guys know one big piece of news before we get started there's a new trailer coming out lots of season seven trailer these are always big go ahead and set a reminder for this or set a reminder from my stream because i will be streaming this and if you're watching this 24 hours later know that this video is already out on my channel or i'm already live streaming this so make sure uh, that you hit the notification bell and subscribe with all notifications turned off for my channel pause this video go watch that and then come back because this is going to be hype you, you, you cannot wait for this they announced it today 8 a.m i'll see you guys uh, there and I'll be seeing you there as well, especially if you're catching this a little later. So let's get into season seven. I'm so excited about this. What's up, Rainstorm? What's up, everybody who's jumping in? Everybody, all the members, everybody coming through. We appreciate you guys. Let's get talking about what makes Apex Legends season seven special. And the TLDR is really going to be in the details. Now, one of the huge things about the details and not just this ranked aspect, but really the new updates coming through to Apex Season 7 uh, is, is really what are these new legends? What are these new characters? And what are they bringing to the table? I'm not sure if they've actually put Horizon in here yet. Uh, but one of the ways that's even bigger than how people are bringing things to the table is where they're going. And that leads us to number one, which is Steam. The fact that Apex Legends is actually coming to Steam uh, really is, I believe, one of the biggest things that you will see. Now, although Nintendo is not launching, as you guys have found out, Chad mentioned that, it's not launching till later, they need a little bit more help. Steam is really one of the biggest things, and you guys don't actually understand how big Steam is. Steam has 90 million, as, a, as the last stats that have been checked, 90 million monthly active users. Now, what does that mean for, for somebody who's essentially, you know, looking at, uh, what happens when I am putting a game onto a platform? Well, let's look at this. Say you're a grocer or you're, you're trying to create products for grocery stores and you're selling at your local mom and pop shop. You make these great chips. Let's call them rain day chips. You know what I'm saying? Let's call them rain day chips, okay? If you go ahead and you make rain day chips and mom and pop likes them, everybody says, yo, man, these chips are crazy. You got to take these to, you know, public. But you're making only 100 bucks because, you know, only five, 10 people buy them a month, but they all love them because they're at the local mom and pop. That's like what any launcher is of a game. Smite has it, uh, you know, Origin has it, but EA is just such a bigger company, it's amplified. But Origin is just a launcher that is just for EA games. It's the mom and pop store of EA games. That's all they've got. Um, Steam is, is like Whole Foods, Kroger, Ralph's, Vaughn's. Uh, it's like Walmart, it's like Costco. And so if you're able to get your game into, or your chips, from the mom and pop store to the Costco aisle or to the Kroger aisle or to the Rouse aisle or Whole Foods, wherever you're at, the customers, the traffic is gonna be so much bigger that you're going to have, because you're gonna have access to such a bigger audience and a more eclectic audience of people who would never have discovered your chips before. And that could mean that that little move makes your chips successful chips for the rest of your life. That's one of the more interesting things I think about why Steam is so big. It's the exposure that may be all your business needs. I mean, think about this. Does this make sense to you? Sometimes you guys have great ideas, but you don't know where to take them or you don't know what, you know, what the value is. Uh, it, you know, no, somebody like won't get you in the door or you have something that you want to promote, but you need money to back it. I mean, that little bit of exposure, that little bit of cash influx, all that needs sometimes is to take a brilliant idea that's waiting in the wings. A game like Apex is already set to succeed. It already has succeeded. It's got season 10 planned out already. Putting it on Steam is going to be an amazing thing. And this is one of the best things to happen in Season 7. Don't underestimate it. Don't look at like, oh my God, I just need, you know what I'm saying? I just need a new weapon, a new character. I'm good. No, 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 no. This, this is like the game. This is like going to worldwide. 
okay? And one of the coolest things that if you'll notice actually, Steam Monthly Active Users, I'm spending a long time on this because there was a great article that was written that not just worldwide, you see 95 million. But one of the interesting things that I remember reading about it is where those where those markets were from and how it's become increasingly worldwide in the fact of Asia is now 21% of the main marketplace in Steam, whereas I believe in like 2012, it was almost zero. And so you're seeing games like PUBG explode uh, because of that aspect uh, in Asia mainly. And their Steam numbers are going crazy and they're getting access to a game through Steam um, in a way they never, ever would have gotten. So there's some really cool stuff on that. You guys can do it. I don't think I have the statistics here, uh, but we will definitely go ahead uh, and get you guys a little bit of that if you want to find out. I'll try to link it in a community section. Okay, let's move on. Number two, vehicles. Vehicles, baby. Tridents. I mean, there's no other way. We're assuming this is a trident. I think there's been a lot of dev tweets talking about tridents as well. Um, vehicles are a huge aspect to games having success at all levels of play. And let me tell you why. The first big part about vehicles is that there's something fun and fresh about movement that everyone loves whether you're a good player or a bad player you like moving different ways to move whether it's jump roping it's 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 grappling it's taking a gravity whatever it's uh doing a jump pad these are all fun things for gamers right we all know that um and so the idea that we're having vehicles adds something that everyone can enjoy it's not just a legend like oh you know man, maybe that's for me maybe that's not for me maybe those abilities are busted vehicles are just really fun two it gives something to a lower level skill to contribute to those crossplay games that kind of frustrate us all. Like, think about it. When you have players who are playing crossplay and they're essentially running up against pro players or people who are on PC and they're a console player, you know, partying with their really fun friend who's in a lobby of, you know, high level, um, uh, really good players. How are they going to contribute to a gunfight? Well, maybe they're not, but they could contribute to driving the team around. They could have an experience in game that's memorable because maybe a trident takes takes people there. They run somebody over if they allow that. I don't know. Uh, and they also contribute to the fight in a way that isn't just hitting your shots because I think that's what players at a lower skill or who are playing with people who are much higher than them struggle with. Hitting your shots, movement. That's Those are the two hardest things. But if you can contribute and have fun, you still want to keep playing. And that is what things like vehicles really, I think, allow players to do. And so vehicles coming in in this season is going to be, I think, one of the best things that they've done. I think it not only makes it more fun for everybody, but it really adds a cool mechanic. And then also, talk about diversity of fights. You can't just diversify it because of weapons. This changes the weapon meta. You know what I mean? What weapons will be more valuable based on if vehicles are in the meta? How will rotation shift? Like, how are you going to rotate? What does that mean about the end game in circles? Can you can you stay later? Can you outrun the zone? How how mobile will this be? How big will the map be because of these vehicles? We're going to notice a lot of different things happening due to the fact that these vehicles are actually um, not only giving you access to fighting in different ways, but playing the map and making different decisions, knowing you have an, uh, hopefully a very fast way of moving across the map. It should mean that you're dying in the ring a lot less, uh, which I think is like a really big, you know, positive. All right, now number three, a lot of you have been waiting for this one. Um, let's talk about the legend, the legend. Everybody who's welcoming to the live stream and all hanging out in the video, I appreciate all of you guys leaving likes, comments, support. I, again, everything I'm talking about, it's a discussion. I wanna hear your thoughts. I wanna hear what you guys are thinking about it. And I want you to comment down below and show that you were here. Also, it's a great metric for YouTube because if you show up, you don't like anything, you don't comment, then YouTube thinks that you weren't interested in this vehicle. Uh, or of a video so when you do that it's almost a negative for them really the absence of any feedback so whether you're disliking or liking do something so that so youtube's like ah let's just throw this under the rug this nobody cares about this like no, no we're doing good stuff here we're having fun i appreciate you guys what's up super safe all right let's move on to horizon now horizon is is the legend here she's a brilliant astrophysicist who escaped the black hole and aims to use her newfound master of gravity to keep a promise um one of the biggest aspects of this uh, and, and trying to keep a promise. This this story that was unveiled on Apex Legends Twitter and then their YouTube yesterday, uh, which was maybe one of the best cinematics that I've seen in a long time, uh, considering the fact that it just went through setting up a narrative of someone who leaves their home to end up having to try and get this Baranthium or Branthanium or whatever it's called as a chemical to help save her world on Olympus, which is the new map we're going to. She ends up doing this with an assistant and doing it all for her boy so that her boy doesn't have a, a has a home to live in, to grow up in, to, to, to be old and have kids, have a life like she had and love somebody. 
So she leaves, she goes on this mission with her assistant, she reaches out into this black hole, she finds a Branthium, she passes it back to her assistant, and the assistant says, eh, screw you, distracts the tether, says, sorry, you know, you shouldn't have been, uh, where's the where's the horrible face that we all hate? Right there. See you later. And uh, she basically screws Horizon. Horizon then spins basically 87 years in space while her son grows up, becomes a dad, becomes a grandpa, and dies. And then she finds a way to return 87 years later to the planet that we assume we'll be playing on. This is what we assume will be going on. Now, let me tell, just tell you one thing right there. If you haven't played Apex since Season 5, you've seen a very different look at a story of a character, right? You're looking at a mom, you're looking at a story of humans, uh, loss of love of sacrifice we all on a daily basis are sacrificing for our loved ones in many different ways whether you know it or not there's many different ways you're supporting your family your friends you know your wife your kids you might be working hard and you might be watching this video just to take a little break you know what I'm saying you might be like out there grinding trying to make sure everybody stays safe we can all relate to that aspect of giving of ourselves to give to others that we care about and the season five to season six characters were Revenant, who was basically dead robot killing mofos because he was angry that they killed him and were using him as a cyborg assassin for like a billion years. Okay, uh, how many of you guys relate to that? I mean, it's a dope story, but I'm just saying, how many of you are cyborg assassins tricked by, you know, the IMC or whoever to be uh, killing people for, you know, 400 years? Okay, none of you, great. Two, Loba. You know, the orphan of the the parents that she killed who were kind of shady in some ways as well, looking for revenge for the cyborg robot, driving the entire plot. Now, listen, I've talked to the writers. I've interviewed them. They're great people. Um, I absolutely love everybody in Apex Legends and the writing team. You guys are cyborgs. David, I don't believe you're a cyborg. Davis, you're not. PJ the DJ, you are not either, man. <laughs> Good to see you showing so, so much support on the streams, though. I appreciate you, man. Um, but listen, guys, for real. It, the relatableness to I think what humans on an outside perspective can can relate to it's not it wasn't there as much with with Loba and with Revenant but I think in this season we're gonna see a story that grabs people a little bit more um if I could look this up I believe it was Tom Cassiello um uh who actually mentioned that in season seven you're going to see all of these stories really come together um and when I see season seven has been in the works since Apex launched, it's no exaggeration. Multiple stories are about to explode. So keep playing and keep following Play Apex because you never know when or where the next twist will happen. So here's this big idea uh, about, you know, the way that uh, this is being constructed is that Apex has been building and it's a slow burn. But remember, they're planning for season 10s and 12s and these things in the future. So we kind of had a couple of lull seasons where the characters weren't as dynamic. And it feels like Horizon's story, alongside all the other stories, we know Octane and Lifeline are from Olympus. Uh, this should probably be one of the best seasons as far as a character arc, as far as a story that we've seen in Apex Legends. And so that's one of the reasons uh, to be really hype. And it's one of the best things I think that this season is bringing, just the storytelling in general. And I can't wait to see what, what happens as well with this new, this, uh, this new one coming through. This is going to be crazy, guys. This is going to be absolutely, absolutely nuts. I cannot wait. Um, all right, so now let's move on to the number four thing. You guys all know it. You guys love it. You guys are excited. Olympus. Now, Olympus is a new map, and this is something that we thought... Let me walk it back here as to why this is so important, because some people may not realize how important this is. Let me walk it back just for a second. At the end of season... Five, we go into a bunker that is opened and in that bunker we find a robot that many people say is this lady who betrayed horizon called ash who is a simulacrum or turned to simulacrum right there she is she is basically now a robot like revenant was and she says we are actually going to Olympus now what's cool about this is that we're like season five this is this is the best thing ever we're going to Olympus and then what happens season six shows up world's edge Kings Canyon Everybody, wait Olympus though right we're going to Olymp are we going to 
Okay, so I think the developers at this point realized there was a lot of shock in the community that Olympus was someplace we were going, but it wasn't where we were going right away. And it created, I think, season six, when you look back at it, season six might be the season that has the biggest kind of like lull between a really hype moment in Apex Legends and another really hype moment. And I think that it's partly because season five teased Olympus and we didn't get that. And we got a new weapon, which is something that was interesting because I think a lot of people started to think that weapons were the reason people would come and hang out and be in Apex and play again and, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I actually think weapons are more for the hardcore base who's played every day. If you're a dude who just shows up to play Apex and have some fun, you don't even have time to learn the weapons that have been in the game since the original season. You're just like messing around. You play 30 minutes a week, an hour a week. You don't have time to get tired of any weapon. So a new weapon is almost like it doesn't even matter. It's for, the, it's for people who have played this game for a long time. So the fact that we missed out on this season, I think, uh, was a little bit, an Olympus last season was a little bit of a downturn, and I think it, it kind of created the biggest lull in Apex Legends history. But I think we're out of that now, and that's why I'm so hype about this new season. We're finally going to Olympus. This is what people really wanted to get done. I can tell India in Braceface, he says, I was so disappointed by season six. Uh, Hayuka, he says, the weapons were already in good state. Why were we trying to, you know, why are we changing that? Uh, also, Blazemaster Gaming, he, he says that uh, the comic strip Ash talked to who I think is Blisk. So if the assistant was evil, then she was working for Blisk, because in the comic strip, Blisk says long time no see. And we know Bliss recruits for the Apex games. He also recruited Rampart at the beginning of Season 6. So what does Rampart have to do? She may not have had uh, as big a say as we will see her have in a little bit. But again, Season 6, uh, some people say in chat as well, it was very buggy. That might be the case. But what they did was they set up this idea this map was coming, and it never came. And now it is actually coming. It's one of the biggest things, I think, for this season. Um, and let's just talk one more reason about why. Because this is really one of the biggest issues. And then we've got one more huge point that I think is bigger and no one is talking about. Like, people are kind of talking about, no one's really talking about how big this is. And the last one, which I don't think um, uh, we talked a little bit about, but I also think that uh, we're not sure if it's coming. It's missing currently. We'll see. We don't have any information on it, but it's the last thing I want to I mention in this. The last aspect of the map is that when you have a new map, um, and especially when you have a new map that's getting um, a lot of love, remember in ranked, no King's Canyon, so it'll just be Olympus and World's Edge, you have a new world to be in. And this is what people want in games. When you want a patch, when you want something, players, they want new. You know, you go, you go to a place and you're spending your time, you guys have very valuable time. I know you do. You guys are all trying to do big things in your life. You're all trying to make things happen. You're all grinding for something in some way, in your own way. Uh, I'll try and take care of your health or I'll do this. So when you sit down and play a game, you know, you want it to be new and fresh and feel like this is serving you for the experience you're looking for. And a new map gives that to people. By the looks of this map, by the looks of what we've been able to see, not only at the end of this video with whatever this is, right? This little kind of like, what what is this? There's a little gravity. Looks like a, like a black ball. Like, I don't know. Hold on, I might have to actually just reset this page. You guys see right here on Olympus, between things like this, what is that? Is that just on the map somewhere? Can you go in that? To this, which looks like it's got this towery city area, and again, that black ball as well. Areas that make you feel like you've never been there, that you're exploring, that you're excited. It gives people, again, not just your older player excitement, but it gives your new casual players something to explore again. Even if they come in for 30 minutes, maybe they don't they don't know the intricacies of the map, but the beauty of a new map and a new image gets them excited about Apex again. It makes it feel like a new game. Um, shoot, man. I feel like there's a lot of really awesome opportunities here coming with this map, and I cannot wait um, to see this happen in the new season. I think it's one of the biggest things um, that is going to be happening for Apex in a while. And because we only get a, a map every three seasons, this is huge. So... Let's move on to the last piece. Number five, before we get to the little feature I want to mention I think is missing. Number five, guys, this is this is a big one. Clubs. Now, clubs. Find like-minded players, build a community, and rise together. You can only assume that this is a guild. This is a clan, or what I would call a clan based on my experience with Smite and with Paladins. Um, you're going to be able to connect with like-minded players and build that community. So... One of the things is that people don't understand. This is one of the biggest incentives for daily logins uh, 
I think that exists in the gaming world. One of the reasons is this, this community building at its core, at its, at its finest, um, happens with things at a ground level. When I was creating a channel for Smite, one of the biggest aspects of my growth was my club, my, my clan. And I would play videos, I would say, join the clan if you want, and we would start getting applications. Soon I'd create officers. Those officers would help manage applications. They'd help keep people in charge. If somebody got a little crazy in the chat, we, we, we'd kick them out or they'd let me know. And we'd say, we gotta deal with this guy, great. They would link to the Discord. It would link to just this crew that every day you log on and it's like a family. Yo, what's up, Clack? You know, what's what's going on? Uh, Mason, what's happening? You know, uh, uh, Sniper. Or, you know, I think at the end of the day, we started to have uh, these amazing like people that I was actually hanging out with on a daily basis that became friends because of the clan. And that clan aspect... From a, from a larger perspective, also gave me the ability to do something I don't do in Apex and in games, guys, uh, which is play with other players most often. I'm usually a solo queue guy. So maybe you out there are solo queue. Maybe you don't have a lot of friends to play with. You don't have to be the one who starts a clan. You could be the one who actually joins my clan or someone else's clan and actually gets access to a group of friends because you're in the chat, because you're hanging out actually gets access to a group of friends you would never have had before that could become lifelong gaming friends and buddies of yours I, I i honestly had dudes that i would play with from the clan that i would make every video with uh they would be just homies and i really really uh missed it and so it was one of the things i really hoped apex legends would bring i thought it was so valuable and the other thing is that you know when you have people that you're parting up with in a clan or a club think about it like this if you run into a solo queue game and somebody's acting like a jerk to you, right? Uh, they just leave. You leave. You never see them again. It, there's no consequence for that guy. He just keeps on being a jerk. In a club, if someone's like that and you party up with, it's like it's almost like a country. It's kind of like a country club. Like you got to pay to get in, and if you do something wrong, we kick you out. You know what I'm saying? Like you, we got to approve you to get in. And when you do something wrong, we kick you out. Oh, you were just talking trash? Oh, this guy's, a, you know, not being cool. Everyone's knowing in the group chat. We're talking to each other. Okay, cool. Let's kick this guy out. Boom. Now you don't have to worry about it. And you keep on having a good experience. I just think it stabilizes people's experience. It allows them to have a home in a game. And I think this is really one of the things that when you add now Steam and the whole amount of players coming in, 95 million players uh, potentially going into the game. You have a home and clans and you have the ability to see a new world to get excited and new vehicles so people can have fun no matter what they're doing, just driving the vehicles around, running people over, feeling like, yeah, I'll go play 30, 30 minutes, hour Apex, it's fun, I'm chilling, I don't even need to worry, I'm just gonna get in a vehicle and run around. Uh, and then you have Horizon who has a story that I think has attracted more people than ever in Apex Legends. You are bound to have a season that could be the best season we have ever had in this game. It is looking like to me this will be the best apex legend season now to the final thing the thing that has been missing um in this one guys which i think is really important and i think it's very very uh crucial to talk about weapon have we heard about a weapon i haven't heard anything about a weapon i've seen it we see the battle pass we see a season seven coming to steam we see a new ranked uh we see clubs uh we see trident we see horizon we see olympus we see a great story, but no weapon. Now, a lot of you may be saying, Rain Day, well, <laughs> well that's, a, that's a fail. Let me tell you why I have a different opinion. Season six, did we get a new weapon, yes or no? Yes, we did, we got a new weapon. Did that change whether you guys stayed happy and excited and hype about season six? No. It didn't. The Volt did not become the reason why you were hyped to play Season 6. It's it's not why. And so the cool thing about no weapon being added is this. Maybe we get a weapon. Maybe it comes at the end of the season. Maybe it comes mid-season. And maybe it comes at launch. I honestly don't know. But a weapon feels and sounds like people are going to be getting this crazy new shooting experience that's going to up-level and be so fun. Newsflash. Apex Legends already has the best gunplay in any Battle Royale. I'm going to say it right there. Apex already has the best gunplay, guys. 
Sharkman mentions it. We got over a thousand viewers right now. So if you're in the chat, go ahead and leave a like for reaching over a thousand viewers. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me on the stream. I appreciate it. And checking in with the video. I like doing these videos right at the start of a stream. Keep people engaged. Do it live. Have fun with you guys. Give the people who are watching the VOD a little bit of more of that personal interaction while they're also having discussion around it. Um, but also, we're going to play some games. We're going to talk a little bit more Apex uh, for the stream portion of this a little later. Feel free to stay around. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for the likes. Oh, we jumped up about 50 likes on that one. I think we're ju oh, jumped up another 20. Here we go. All right, so getting back to it. Um, the idea is this. Weapons are better as mid-season incentives. Let me... Guys, the, if a season is centered around a weapon, it's not enough for people to get hype and stay sustained in that hype oh a mid-season weapon though gives people the ability to get hype for no reason in a season that they've already explored quite a bit and learn new gunplay learn a new weapon meta if anything i think mid-season weapon meta changes are more effective for a game because for that player base that has jumped in they've explored everything new and now they're like okay i've seen everything new and ooh, shiny you know cyberpunk 27 is coming out in what eight years i don't know they delayed it again this morning that game will never come out at this point oh look uh ps5 what what kind of exclusives are on that let me go over there oh my god wow there's uh there's what is it what is a new zelda game there's always a new zelda game coming out in the holidays i have no idea but at the end of the day everyone gets excited about the shiny toys around them it's holiday season, but then you switch the weapon meta up. You add a new weapon. Everyone's like, wait, no, no, no. I got to check this out. How's the new weapon in Apex? I've been playing. I got my skills up. This translates personally into people, I think, having a better experience over the course of the season. So, yes, no new weapon, but I think that is okay. This is my thought on what the best things are coming in season seven, but I want to know what your guys' thoughts are in the comments section below or currently in the chat if you are in the live stream right now. I also want you guys to give a like or a dislike. Do something because that way YouTube knows you were here and that you had a feeling about it. Otherwise, it's gonna think you were. I was just you know a, a bland rug that, that you guys walked on and, and, and didn't even realize was under your foot, okay? We gotta let them know you, you thought one way or the other about this thing, and that's, that, that's honestly okay with me. But go ahead and do something. And of course, subscribe with notifications on so you guys can stay tuned to live streams and the videos. And if you're just finishing this up, again, make sure to watch that brand new release for me that I will be reacting to 